Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship to the house of the Lord. talking about that's what I'm talking about welcome church there is joy in the house of the Lord today yes there is you know we're, we're uh, gifted and uh, thankful that we have Pastor Mitch here that's going to help us with worship along with Billy and this great praise band thank you for being here want to welcome everybody there's joy in the house of the Lord we have a lot of reasons to be joyful if you're new this morning welcome we're glad you're here if this is your home church welcome home it's great to be here. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as we look forward to it. Always want to do our commercial. We have Connect cards for those that don't, haven't connected with us. We just want your information. We don't do a lot of announcements because we want to spend our time in the house of the Lord praising God. So I encourage you, if you're new, that you fill out uh, the Connect card with your information. There's also some prayer requests. There's also a way of giving. None of us carry cash anymore, but you can uh, use your phone and uh, give a donation that way. So I'm excited about being, being here this morning. It's great to see this great crowd. We only have one service this morning, and, and this is wonderful. So uh, would you uh, please uh, stand with me, and I want you to uh, fist bump the people around you and just say, hey, it's great having you here this morning. Good 
morning. All right, let's lift our Lord. Lift our voices before the Lord this morning, church, for he is worthy. And worthy of every song we could ever sing. And worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Here we go. Show 
morning again. My name is Robert. I'm one of the elders here at First Christian Church. And again, I am uh, I'm happy and I'm humbled to lead us in communion this morning. We are blessed this morning to have Paul Tucker give us the message, and I'm excited about that. They give Pastor Mitch uh, some time off, but yet he doesn't take time off. He uh, jumps on a guitar and helps with our worship, so thank you for that. But uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We have a lot to be joyful about. We have a lot to rejoice about. I know for myself, I have our oldest son, Barry, from Minnesota that came to visit us for Christmas. We were up uh, seeing his sister up in Tampa. But I'm sure maybe a lot of you were able to be with family, and, or maybe you were able to Zoom them, or maybe call them on the phone even though we're distances away. It's kind of neat that we can gather with our family. And unfortunately, this might be a sorrowful time for some of you at this Christmas time. And for that, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, we have loved ones that aren't here anymore. But yet, as believers in Jesus Christ, we know they are in a better place and that we're blessed by their presence in our life. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for our communion time. I get excited that here at our church every Sunday we have communion. For me, it slows my life down. It makes me realize why I go to church and why I believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he came down for me and you. He was a sinless man, but yet he took on that role. And as Pastor Mitch mentioned in the uh, Christmas Eve service, he was at the highest place in heaven. And he came down and walked amongst us and gave his life for us. So please join me in a few minutes of uh, 
quiet time as we prepare our hearts for those that are at home. I ask that you get your elements. And let's, uh, let's take this time to maybe peel off the little top so that we're not, we're not uh, fidgeting with that once our communion time comes. In Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29, it says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup. when he had given thanks. He gave it to them and said, Drink, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for you and for for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said, I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it anew with my Father. you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, Father God, we thank you for this day that we can join in your house and make a joyful noise for you. Father, we have a lot to rejoice in, and we ask that you open our minds and our ears to uh, Paul Tucker's message this morning that we might take it in and give us nourishment and courage to go beyond these walls and to spread it to our world. Father, I thank you for Christmas time and what all that means. Families gather, some are no longer together. But Father, I just pray that you will send a blessing upon this congregation so that we will feel the peace of Christmas. And Father, we hope that this morning, through our time of worship, that it brings glory and honor to you and your holy name and your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, there's a prayer that we we say a lot, and it's the Lord's Prayer. But to me, that it it is important that you have taught us how to pray, how we need to address you, how we need to ask for forgiveness, how we need to thank you, and how we need to glorify you. So, Father, I just pray this morning that this is just not a regular prayer, but it is a prayer that unites this church because it's not my Father, it's our Father. Will you please join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We were waiting without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin king the world From the throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dark Hey! 
yeah, all right, here I am. <laughs> well, I didn't plan it that way. I thought there was one more song and I was waiting for it. It was going to be a good one. It was going to be a doozy. I knew it. Anyway, I apologize. I was supposed to be right there and I wasn't. Oh, I can't wish you Merry Christmas. But I can wish you Happy New Year! We have got 2022 just coming down the pike, right? And we can think about 2021, and maybe for many of us, we can just wipe our brow and say, Whew, wow, that was a trip. We thought 2020 was a ride. We can think about so many things, if we want to, that could cause us concern, discouragement. We could think about, wow, oh, wow, you know, the economy isn't, isn't going great. Boy, that's, 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 that's a tough one. Inflation, yeah, wow, I mean, really, that's, that's tough. Uh, we've got all kinds of issues with crime now. And it just seems like there's a great spirit of funk sometimes. And I think if, if we let that kind of thinking get a hold of us, it's kind of a spiral down. The more you think about it, the more discouraged. The more discouraged, the more you think about it. And pretty soon you're just saying, well, my land, oh, yeah, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, this is going wrong. My toast was burnt this morning for breakfast. Bah humbug! Well, this morning, I thought it would be great if we could focus on things that we could actually rejoice in. You know, you know, cause, cause think about it. Oh, well, when I was a school teacher a long time ago, at the end of the semester, the first semester, Christmas break, when you come back, uh, sometimes we'd have our semester exams, but sometimes it was just the end of everything for the first semester, and here we have a brand new semester, and I'd show the kids, and they were fourth graders, so they were easily impressed, and I'd say, look at this grade book. Remember all those grades you weren't happy with last semester? Gone. What you did last semester, maybe didn't work as hard as you should have academically, maybe you goofed off a little bit on this, a little bit on that, gone. Look at the fresh, clean, new page for the next new semester. And now you have to decide how you're going to fill the pages. So that's kind of how I was thinking about 2022. Unfortunately, we're always going to have challenges. And probably more than we like to think, the toast is going to burn for breakfast. The oatmeal is going to stick to the bottom of the pan. It, it does, I know. And, uh, it, uh, and things may not always go the way we would like to go. And if we allow it, because you know the devil loves it when things don't go our way and we become discouraged, right? He thinks, all right, I just got that little in there. That's exactly what I want to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what we sometimes fall into the trap. So I was thinking, man, the importance of celebrating. How important it is. I love the songs we sang this morning. Oh, how great it is to rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Because we have so much to rejoice and be glad about. Rejoicing. 
Like gratitude, rejoicing is an attitude. And like rejoicing, it's an action. And because it is an action, it requires us to make a conscious decision that that's what we're going to do. And there have been times in my life, sitting down, going, wow, I'm kind of bummed, you know, because this isn't right and this isn't right. And then I remember back when I was doing children's church many, 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 many years ago, there was a little song we had sing with the kids. Count your blessings. Yeah. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And you will be surprised. And you will. You'll be surprised to see what God has done. And so I would start. Well, just what has God done in my life? What is it that I can rejoice in? What is it that I can be thankful for? And I just did this exercise just a couple of days ago. And it was just interesting how once I started thinking about the goodness of God and His blessings, even in times of difficulty, I could honestly say that God lifted my spirits. Because God made me realize that as a child of his, I am greatly blessed. And it's good for us to be reminded that we are greatly blessed. Trials will come. Trials will go. Difficulties will always be with us. There's going to be challenges that we're going to be facing all the time. That's not going to go away. But how we choose to live in the midst of it is what we're going to be talking about this morning. The drawback in rejoicing is too often we focus on the difficulties, the disappointments, the ups, the downs in our lives. I know, oh God bless your hearts, I know some of you are dealing with some really big things in your life. I understand that. I'm not trying to be flimp, flip, flippant, excuse me, or be casual about it or make light of the things that you're going through. But I do want you to know that God is very much aware of where you're hurting and what you're having to deal with. He's not turned a blind eye. He's not closed his ears to it, and he certainly, certainly hasn't shut his heart off. He's very, very, very much concerned and desiring to be a ministering agent in your life, even in these difficult times. So there are four things I want us to think about, and I'm going to be talking, first of all, about salvation, because it is the Most important of all, it's what all the others that I'm going to be talking about hinge on. Those of us who have come to Christ, have accepted Him as our Savior, have the realization that without Him, we're nothing. And without Him, we have nothing. Right? Yeah. Therefore, because of our relationship with Christ... Because of our relationship with Christ, we can rejoice. Jesus told his disciples in Luke 10, 20, You need to rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. And to illustrate this thought, Jesus in Luke chapter 15 gave three illustrations. And the first one is the parable of the lost sheep. And this is where the shepherd leaves the 99 to go search for the one sheep that strayed. And when he found him, he to- found the sheep, he told everybody, Hey, I found my lost sheep. And there was great rejoicing. In Luke 15, 7, in reference to that, Jesus said, In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God. The second is when a woman loses a coin in the house. 
and she goes and she looks underneath the pillows on the couch. She goes and tears the beds apart looking for it. She looks, sweeps underneath the tables and the chairs and she just cleans the house from top to bottom, stem to stern, front to back, up and down. She's looking for that coin. And finally, there it is. And she picks it up and she runs and tells her family and friends and her neighbors and says, oh man, I found it, I found it, I found it. And everybody was so very, very happy for her. And then Jesus says in the same way, that excitement, that thrill, that blessing, that rejoicing, in the same way there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents now the third story the third parable jesus gave was the prodigal son who takes his inheritance and he says uh yeah you know the story dad you know i want to i want to leave you know just give me what belongs to me of the inheritance and and i'll be out of here and it's been a great life here thanks a lot goodbye see ya so the father goes, oh, okay, if that's really what you want. Gives the son half of his inheritance, give the inheritance to him, his portion of it, and off the kid goes. And of course, there's that riotous living he does, and he has a bunch of friends while he has money, and there's a bunch of partying while he has money, and then finally he runs out of money. Runs out of money, runs out of friends. Runs out of money, has no way to make a living, so what does he end up doing? Ends up in a pigsty, and he's wallowing in self-pity in the pigsty. And he looks around, and he has an epiphany. I like that word. Illustrated by a light bulb going off over his head. There are servants in my father's house that are eating better than I am. There are serv even the lowliest servants are eating better than I am. There are lowly servants that are dressed better than I am. And there are lowly servants in my father's house that aren't living in a pigsty like I am. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to tell my father, I'm sorry, I messed up. I don't deserve to be your son. Just, just let me serve as a servant. So he starts heading home. He can see the house off in the distance. And he looks, and there's someone coming toward him. And not just walking, running. And it's his father. And so this is what it says. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, because he was looking for him, filled with love and compassion. Very important. He ran to his son, embraced and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father... He said, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Let a ring on his, put a ring on his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf. We must celebrate with a feast. Before Christ entered our lives, we were lost sheep, lost coins, lost sons. It's when we realize that without Christ, we were lost and in need of being found and we turned to him. Then in heaven, there was great rejoicing. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is Ephesians chapter 2. It gives us a very clear picture of the change that takes place in a person's life when he trusts Christ as his Savior. So I'd love to take the time just to read this because it's very, very good. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, made alive in Christ. Verse 1 says, Once you were dead 
because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our own sin nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Verse 4, two little words that just, but God. How grateful we are. That God intervenes. But God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much. That even though we were dead because of our sins. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ. And seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Because we are united with Jesus Christ. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united in Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for it. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done nor none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. So if you haven't gotten the idea yet about the importance of being saved. I hope those verses speak to your heart. If you haven't done Anything about trusting Christ as your Savior? What a great day to get that resolved even today, right now. The Bible's very clear about the fact that none of us are guaranteed any time but the moment we're living in. Today is the day of salvation. And if you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, what's keeping you from it? Pride? Grant you, we are sometimes self-absorbed so much that we don't hear what's being said. I understand that. But Jesus is calling you. Now is the time to get saved. Oh, and just one more thought on the subject. One of the greatest ways we can celebrate the miraculous gift of salvation is by telling someone about it. Telling how you got saved sharing what Christ has done with you since you've been saved. It is a blessing to hear how people respond to your testimony about God's love and God's grace in your life. Salvation. It's so important. It's so very important. And it truly is something that we can rejoice over. The second thought I want us to look at this morning is that God is active in our lives. God answers prayer. In Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power to work within us to accomplish infinitely more than what we might, what we might ask or what we might think. So start tracking this in this new year. Start tracking God sightings. Uh, in the experience God study that our church has done several times, it's encouraged, the, the uh, study encourages us to look for things that God is actually doing. I, not actually seeing God, you know that, but the, the works that he's doing in our lives. Those times when we see him working on our lives or the lives of others. The kind of exercise helps us see how God is actively ministering to us. He is involved. We can record answers to prayer, people getting saved, relationships restored, financial issues resolved, maybe struggling with depression and God gives us peace and comfort. 
God works in our lives in big ways, little ways, in so many ways. And what a, it's a blessing, it's a challenge, it's, it gives us an opportunity to think about God's goodness if we start jotting those down. You see, God sees and hears and acts on our behalf. We are told in Exodus 3, the children of Israel were in distress because the Egyptians were really being mean and cruel to them. God meets with Moses in the burning bush, and this is what he says. In verse 7, it says, And the Lord told him, I have certainly seen, God sees, the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware. I've seen, I've heard, I'm aware. And then this is what he says. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. God gave us his son in John 3, 16 and 17. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. He also helps us overcome temptations. And he makes ways for us to escape. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, The temptations in your life are no different from what other experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. And when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. One more thought on God's actions in our lives. In Philippians 4.19, it says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. God loves us and he cares for us and he is actively involved in each of our lives. The third thought I want us to be thinking about as far as rejoicing and celebrating in our Christian life is the fact that we have an abundant life in Christ. Now, it's no secret, and it shouldn't be a surprise for us to hear that God desires to bless us abundantly. He wants to bless your socks off. I was thinking... <laughs> It's, it was too late a thought. I said, well, if I bought everybody a pair of socks, <laughs> and you could tell, Mitch is really good about having, oh, here's a rock, here's a little toy soldier, here's a cross. I mean, I, I really like that. Well, it was $400 in socks, so I... <laughs> but if you have a pair at home, take one out and say, oh, yeah, because God really does care for us. He loves us. He loves us so, so much. I have to remind myself and I tell others that we're not an afterthought. Things in our lives aren't something that catches God off guard. He's not sitting there on his throne going, Whoa, I didn't see that one coming. No. Grasp the thought that the great creator, the God, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, in his mind, we're right here, right in the forefront of his mind and of his heart. Please know that God loves you so much that he gave his son for you, for me. In Malachi 3, it says, Bring all your tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. 
be generous with God, says the Lord of heavens. I will open the heaven, windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Jesus said it this way. I am the gate. Those who come through me will be saved. Because it's only through Jesus Christ that we can get saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. Now the thief, and in this case the devil, purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He looks at you and he thinks, oh, I know how I can get them to stumble and fall. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Other translations say to bless them abundantly. And abundant means exceedingly, very high, beyond measure, more, a quantity so abundant as to be considerably more than what anyone could possibly expect or imagine. In short, Jesus promises us a life far better than we could ever think or imagine. In 1 Corinthians 2.9 it says, No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 3.20, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. God desires to bless us abundantly. Now that, I should say, now that doesn't mean that you're going to have a Rolls Royce for every day of the week. That doesn't mean that you're going to have a four-story house uh, it's not material things that we're necessarily referring to. God wants to bless us spiritually. He wants us to understand that we can have joy because of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. And that we can successfully get through the day with his power and his strength. Well, okay, so the fourth thing. The fourth thing is the church. This body of believers that are gathered together in this auditorium. As part of the body of Christ, we will love God and others. We will share the gospel with unbelievers. We will have fellowship with brothers and sisters. In Christ, we will become more like Jesus in our fellowship in church. In other words, these five biblical purposes are met in worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship. The church helps us grow. The church encourages us. We're not intended to be passive in church. You come to church, be a part realize that this is where we can be encouraged. This is where we can find comfort. This is where we can find health. We need to be at, but not only will we find, we find it, but you will also be able to give it to someone else who's in need of it. It's in the church that the, the uh, verses that Start with love one another. There are 32, 32 passages that deal with love one another. And I thought it'd be worthwhile to mention them this morning because that's where life action happens in the church. First one is love one another. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another. Live in harmony with one another. Build up one another. Be like-minded towards one another. Accept one another. Admonish one another. Greet one another. Care for one another. Serve one another. Bear one another's burdens. Forgive one another. Be patient with 
with one another. Speak the truth in love. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Speak to one another with psalms. Submit to one another. Consider others better than yourselves. Look to the interest of one another. Bear with one another. Teach one another. Comfort one another. Encourage one another. Exhort one another. Stir up one another to love and good works. Show hospitality to one another. Use the gifts God has given us to benefit one another. Clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Pray for one another. Confess your faults to one another. The church, the church offers so much that we need as individuals and that we can give to others. So in conclusion, we've talked about celebrating the blessings of being saved. Then we talked about how we ought to celebrate God's presence in our lives. Then we also mentioned he is actively working in us and through us to bring about his will. Thirdly, we talked about Christ. We have uh, his gifts of abundant living. And finally, we look at the church and the benefits that the church plays in our lives. So in closing, I want to read another short passage that sums this up. And it says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, because he wanted to repeat it, he wanted his people to hear it, Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Each day, proclaim the good news that he saves. Let's pray. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, we have so much as believers to be thankful for for, to rejoice in, to give thanks, to honor you and recognize that in you we have everything. And God, I just want to thank you. Thank you for this, this dear, sweet body of believers that come together to sing your praises, to worship you, and I do pray that as they go out this week, that they will be challenged to look for your activity in their lives and that they will be quick to share the good news. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you rise, church? As I'm like you processing... That message I was thinking about point two was just really sticking in my head there, Paul. It was like, I can't always see what God's doing while I'm in the moment. You know, I can't always see what he's doing, what he's up to. I can't see the works of God. I almost like I can't see the forest for the trees, for what's going on in my life right now. But no matter what the circumstances are, if I look backwards a little bit, I look whether I've come through some circumstance or some challenge or whatever, maybe the greatest moment or greatest season in my life, I look back and I, I can see the faithfulness of God all over. I can see his hands all over that, you know. And then I'm reminded just how good and how faithful our God is. So that, that, was, a, that was a fantastic message. And, and I hope, Paul, that you will send me that last illustration about all the points of the church through the scripture. That was fantastic. Maybe we'll put that online or something. That'd be great because I was thinking about yeah, we do that, we do that, we do that. Oh, man, I need to work on that. I need to work on that, you know. But, man, our God is faithful. And then uh, 
just because I didn't get to talk very much today, so I thought I'd say one more thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, next Sunday, we're, we're going to be talking about new, new things and moving forward and in our lives and in the church. And, and then the week after that, we're going to talk about the need for community. And then the week after that, uh, January 16th, we're launching into Rooted, and I'm going to be doing a message series that will go along uh, with that. So I hope that you'll uh, come and be a part of that, invite your friends, invite your family and your neighbors. But let's close out with the faithfulness of God, and let's worship how good our Father is. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father It's who you are who you are who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am Oh, I've seen Many searching for answers Far You are perfect in all of your ways.